Hey, Miami sports fans, stop by Canesware today at 2655 South University Drive in Davie, Florida, and check out their awesome merchandise selection of your favorite South Florida sports teams. From the Miami Dolphins, Hurricanes, Heat, Marlins, Florida Panthers, and Inter-Miami, they've got it all. Celebrate your favorite team and show off your fandom with their beautiful team starter jackets, killer-looking helmets, team jerseys, cool shirts, and more. And if you're out of town or out of state, no worries. Go to canesware.com and find everything they have on their site. Select what you want, and they will ship your gear to you. Anything over $99 is shipped for free. Don't wait. Stop at Canesware today. You know, sometimes uh, you're right, sometimes you're wrong. Alright, hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Fins Talk today on the Fins Talk Sports Network. I'm Bobby Fins Talk, and that's the one and only Fish Tank Hank live on location. At Hard Rock in Tampa. What's up, Fish Tank? Uh, not much. I'm here to do a little bit of gambling today, uh, see how the tables treat me, or maybe I'll pull the uh, one arm bandit a little bit. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Frank, well, before we roll on, we got a lot to talk about. Uh, you know, obviously, right. you're live on location, but before we do all that, how's your week so far? My week has been great. I just spent uh, the other day with doll and Finn Stanza, so that was a great time that's right you had a very good episode uh tati uh after that show came to me she goes i saw some of it obviously i was talking but she came she goes that was a great show those three together the chemistry they had a great topic great conversations uh so that was it was a great show and guys if you've never seen bandwagon hop on the bandwagon on thursday nights at 8 p.m eastern you got fish tank hank Finn Stanza, and maybe someone who joins them special guests like Courtney, Dolphin seven uh, on Dolphin's Diaries. So I'm wearing red. I usually put on Dolphin's gear before a show, but I just came from flag football practice. Co there you go. Coaching my son on flag football. Uh, I wanted to be the Dolphins, obviously, but I was just telling, hey, somebody took it before I did, took the team. So we got the Chiefs. So you know what? I'm rolling with it. I'm cool with it. Hopefully I get some good mojo since the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. We got the jerseys today, and I saw the Dolphin jerseys on the other side of the practice field, and I told my son, we played them first. They're the first game of the season, and I said, for the first time in my life, of course, I didn't use this word. I said, but, but I look forward to kicking the Dolphins' ass next week in week one. I hope they lose every game. <laughs> but other than that, a, little a lot. To Just a little <laughs> better. A, a tiny bit. A little bit. Uh, but guys, if you're new to the channel, whether you're watching on Twitch, YouTube, X, Twitter, Facebook, wherever you're watching, we appreciate you. Hop on over to YouTube if you can. If you want <clears throat> to leave any comments, like and subscribe. Got a lot to talk about. But we'll roll on here uh, today. Going to catch up on some Dolphin news. And I want to go around the league to see what the experts are saying. Because we're all doing mock drafts. Hank is doing 5, 10 a day. He's releasing on Twitter. Uh, pissing people <laughs> off, making people happy, um, you know. But mostly pissing them off. <clears throat> mostly pissing them off. But the experts are releasing their mocks as well. So I want to go around the league and see what they're saying, and then Hank and I will react. You could react as well. Uh, but we're also going to catch up on some news. <clears throat> First off. But wait a minute, Bobby. Bobby. Yeah. I am an expert. I am an expert. You know, you keep calling them. I'll do it experts. like this. Sorry, sorry. I'll do it like this. I, the I, experts. I've been putting. I have been putting out my expert mock drafts. <laughs> there you go. There you go. What pick? Here's here's my thing. What picks have pissed off people the most in your mocks? 
when you do when you do your mocks. Where people are like like you that when you're going, okay, come on, it's just a mock draft. But what what do people say that I, piss, what pick picks pisses them off? When I start <laughs> with different players on purpose, it pisses them off. Like I'll I'll purposely force myself to take BPA. Yeah, it's a wide receiver. No matter who it is, if it's BPA, sometimes I take BPA. And if I put a wide receiver, oh, we need offensive line, we need a defensive line, and we need linebackers, and we need this. And I'm like, calm down. We we need a wide receiver number three also, folks. So yeah, chill right. out. And if somebody's sitting there and they're a wide receiver one, well – then you have a replacement for your number one that'll be leaving in a year or two. So, you know, chill out. It's just a mock. It doesn't matter. I could pick a cornerback first. It doesn't matter. If I pick a cornerback, they'll all blow up about that too. Oh, what do we need that for? Blah, blah, blah. You, you know, it's just a matter of BPA sometimes. And everybody always says, oh, BPA, BPA. I wouldn't pick any of those. I'd take the BPA. You know, you you, you got to give a little bit. They're mocks. They're there to have fun with for me. Yeah. I mean, I like to, to try to do a mock with a dip starting with something different. And, you know, people always say, oh, best player available. But people, when it comes down to it, people don't ever take the best player available. They always take uh, the best player of need. That's Not right. The best player available. And what I take is the best player available because that's what the Dolphins want. <laughs> Hank is on location, full disclosure. So <clears throat> what usually happens when he's in the Dolphins mobile is that people will come hovering around his car and taking pictures. So if you see him get sidetracked, that's what's going on. Yeah, of course, that's keep twisting well. my head. People, people keep waving at me, so I keep twisting my head. <laughs> Um, but you know, you're right. You know, and I don't think people, everybody, when people go, oh, that draft is terrible. Oh, this, all that. Listen, nobody thought the Dolphins were going to take Camp Smith last year. They had Sammy Howard, they had Jalen Ramsey, Cater Kohu, Nick Needham, <clears throat> and then all these guys. And then remember, when they drafted Camp Smith, you go, why the hell did they do that? Now, a year later, yeah. it kind of makes sense what happened with Xavier Howard. You look at the wide receiver position. First off, there's no true wide receiver three. I don't care what anybody says. If you go into this season with Barrios as your wide receiver three, you're 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 failing your team. Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle, great one, two, one A, one B, whatever. But you need a wide receiver three. And Jalen Waddle's going into a contract year. Tyreek could be gone after next season or the season after. You need to be pre you need to prepare. If someone like a Bryant Thomas. Or Roma Dunze, whomever is sitting there at 21 and they are the best player available, you take them. There is no linebacker. I, I my opinion, this is my opinion. Someone else can have a different opinion. I respect it. But there is no linebacker at 21 I'm willing to take. So people go, we need a linebacker, hold that noise until 55 or later. <laughs> there's no one there's no one worth the 21st overall pick <clears throat> no you know now you, you know what's funny bobby bobby yeah i took i took neighbors i took neighbors at 21 and these people were pissed off i mean i took them at seven i traded up and took them at seven. Oh, and okay i traded up i wanted <clears throat> I wanted to see what I could get at seven. So I traded up before the draft started. Okay. So I wasn't trading up to get a player. That's just who fell to me was neighbors. A number four rated overall player on their board. At number seven. Fish tank. Let me tell you something. Malik neighbors. First of all, Marvin Harrison is amazing. He is, he is, he is just as advertised, but my opinion, Malik Neighbors is is one is one B to Marvin Harrison's one A. He is great. He's going to be a, a, an unbelievable receiver going to pro life. So if the Dolphins actually ended up with Malik Neighbors, oh, it would be a beautiful thing. Um, especially if it was at twenty one. Obviously, very highly random. What's that noise? 
Just my car making noise. Oh, okay. All right. Thought you were beeping hey, at somebody. Get away from car. <clears throat> my goodness. <laughs> um, let's talk about this. You touched on this on Thursday night about Mike McDaniel. Uh, yeah. You know, he. You know, they asked him about potentially giving up play calling. He said that he did think about it long and hard, but. We'll call plays during the practice in the spring and in the fall into the regular season and see how it goes. He will adjust if necessary. Our very own Fitz Stanza is adamant about McDaniel calling, giving up play calling. You touched on this. Uh, if you're okay to touch on it one more time with me, what are your yeah. thoughts about McDaniel giving up play calling? Uh, you know, and what he had to say about, hey, you know what? Let me see how it goes. And I'll, I'll, maybe I'll have to adjust. You know, are you cool with him say, holding on to play calling and seeing how it goes? Or you're like, no, he has to give it up. Yeah. I am I think it could be at a reduced level of some sort for him rather than it just being, you know, it'll never be stripped away. Because if obviously if the head coach wants to throw in a play, they're going to throw in a play. Fins up, everybody. So, you know. I like, I would like somebody else to call the plays. And like uh, Dahl had said, Courtney, she had said, uh, you know, in play, you need somebody calling it in play. And I agree. When the plays are going on, he needs to be watching what's going on on the field, talking to his guys as they take off on the field, as they come back. That's what the coach needs to be doing is coaching. And the play calling kind of takes him away. But I like the fact that he's, he is open to it by what he said. In my opinion, he's open to it. Uh, and I hope that he does it, to be totally honest with you. Because so, he said he wanted to do it during the spring. He said he wanted to do it during the spring and that he would see from there or whatever. So I, I think it's possible it could happen. But. Who are you going to bring in is the question. So, and, and that is a great question. My thing is this. You you know this because you, we and I have been doing this for a little while now. So I think you're, you're aware of what my philosophies are and everything. Uh, I'm big into when you're the head coach, you're the head coach. You focus on the entire thing. Not, so, you know, I don't believe a coach should call plays, offense, or defense. However, the other coin of this is he did lead – and coach the number one offense in football. The at one point the most explosive offense in football. The greatest show on surf. Every some people around not just Dolphin fans but around the league was calling this offense the second best offense since the St. Louis Rams with Kurt Warner, Isaac Bruce, Torrey Holt, Marshall Falk. I mean that's how good this offense was. Now in the second half of the season the running game became another issue where he just gave up on it. That was the issue. That's where I think there needs to be the adjustment. Someone either needs to get in his head or he needs to get his own head to get out of that fuck where he's, oh, pass happy. Other than that, even though my philosophy is a coach should be the coach, let your coordinator, Frank Smith, call plays, let your D coordinator, Anthony Walt Reaver, call defensive plays, you focus on being the head coach. That way you're focused on the whole thing. And maybe he is. My thing is not his issue focusing on the whole thing. It's more about the adjustments. I would rather coach coach, but Mike McDaniel's case, he did coach the number one offense in football. And it's hard to, to have an excuse to say, you need to give up play calling. Well, I had the number one offense in football. True, but it's like, you know what I mean? It's it's a hard argument. So I think it's more needed of an adjustment rather than giving up play calls. Now, if he midseason starts to drop off again, and because he's not, you know, trusting the run and maybe he just can't get out of his own head i would have more respect for him if we're eight and three nine and two whatever and all of a sudden he starts noticing there's two games where he people are questioning his play calls and he's saying like is raheem mozart is saying who just got a new deal congratulations to raheem mozart he says hey man what about me that mike McDaniel says you know what i think it's time to hand the play calling to frank smith i'm gonna focus on being the coach i would have a lot more respect for him but right now, I'm cool with him holding on to play calling. Well, 
I, I'm cool with it for now, but I, I wouldn't try to change it mid-season like you said, though. I, I wouldn't do that. That's just me, though. I, I wouldn't screw with something in the middle of the season. I would get something down pat before the season starts if that was the direction they really want to go. Uh, for me, it's take it or leave it. He's got, what is this, his third year now, right? His yeah. third year. He's, he's coming in. He should have a little better grasp on it. You know, he made a couple of mistakes where they had a timeout and they didn't take advantage of the timeout. They had to call another timeout, you know, to send send the play in and all all that kind of stuff. You know, things like that were happening. So for me, there's got to be some sort of change. Now, what to what degree they'll have to determine that. Absolutely. I think that's fair. Uh, I think with our offensive coordinator has been here for three years now as well, Frank Smith, who helps with the play designs, helps with coaching the offense. I think it's easier for him to take over play calling, possibly if situation calls for it midseason, than it would be if you have a new offensive coordinator or you don't even have an offensive coordinator and you tell your quarterback's coach, hey, call plays now. Then I'm with you. But because Frank Smith's been there for three seasons with Mike McDaniel, I think it'll be an easier transition because it's the same playbook. It's just now maybe Frank Smith, if, if, if it becomes the case midseason, could say, you know what? All right, Raheem, Devon Ancient, we're focusing more on you. Uh, let's catch up on prospect visits. Uh, the Dol- According to NFLTradeRumors.co, uh, who pulls reports from different insiders around the league, the Dolphins have recently met with the following prospects, Fish Tank. Northern Iowa defensive lineman Christian Boyd, Louisville defensive back, Jarvis Brownlee, UCLA linebacker Darius Masua, and his teammate, first-round favorite, edge rusher Leatu Latu, Texas tight end Jatavion Sanders, and Michigan linebacker Michael Barrett. We've talked about Latu and Sanders, Fish Tank, before. But is there any name that I've said that intrigues you or makes you – intrigues you, like goes, oh, I like that, or it makes you go, why are they looking at him? <laughs> you like that one? They're looking, they're looking at players that aren't going to be in their reach, for one thing. They're also looking at players that they're not going to pick at 21, too, because they're not going to take that linebacker. So I don't know. Well, you got to remember – you got to remember, Fish Tape, they're not going to look at just F21. They're looking at 55, fifth round, six, seven, and undrafted. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, I mean, it's all smoke and mirrors. It's not like they don't have tape on these people. It's not like they, they haven't seen them. They might go there just to learn a little more about their personalities, who they are as leaders, what they do as people on their off time. How they like to fill their off time, all the all that little <laughs> stuff, you know. Uh, they've got to do it. Get out of the bat cave. No, I'm stuck in the bat cave right now. <laughs> Playing Fortnite. I I have to uh, I have to go uh, gambling. So I'm trying to get Bobby to let me out early. That's right. Don't worry. We're rolling around here. We're rolling around. Uh, uh, no mock draft today. We're just we're straight out here. Um, all right. So uh, now, Northern Ireland, Christian Boyd, late round pick, possibly on draft to free agent. I know a lot of people who like him. Um, I saw some stuff on him. He's decent. You know, he's a death piece. Can't body. Who? Uh, Christian Boyd out of Northern Iowa. A lot of people like yeah. him. Uh, it trained by the linebackers as mid late round picks. Uh, obviously edge rusher, Liatu Latu, that dude is fire. My second fate, my second ranked edge rusher in the draft on, you know, that dude's motor is off the charts right there with Jared verse. Uh, obviously Dallas Turner is number one, like Dallas Turner, but if Latu is there at 21, it's hard to pass up on you pair him with Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb. Woo-hoo-hoo. My goodness. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Love that met with him. And obviously, Jatavion Sanders. That's the that's in the 55 range for me, not 21. But I love that Miami in free agency, but also in the draft, especially, 
is looking like they're doing really good due diligence. Yeah. Research and you hit the nail on the head. A lot of these names, a few of these names that we've brought up, Fish Tank, aren't names that go, whoa. They're names that you go, huh? But what Miami's doing is you're absolutely right. <clears throat> they have film on these guys, but it's about meeting with them, talking with them. It's yeah. just like, you know, <clears throat> before you and I met, and we and I was looking for to bring on a co-host. Fish tank, hey, I'm gonna but before I was like, oh, Hank's interested. Let's get him on. No, I talked with you. You and I clicked. We had a great phone conversation. You and I were like, you know, it was funny. It was like we were like doing a show while we were talking the first time we ever talked. And it was like, all right, cool. We're gonna do this. And look, two, three, almost, you know, years later, seasons, and we're still kicking butt, you know. So you could see it like someone, but you gotta click with them. And that's what Miami's doing. So uh, that's what I thought about that. Michigan linebacker Michael Barrett, intrigued by that for a mid-late round pick. Uh, but I'm happy they're doing new due diligence. <clears throat> Forgive well, me, guys. Allergies I, is kicking my ass. I have some bad news, Bobby. <clears throat> oh. I, I might not be going to the Dolphins games because I recently found out that they're concerned about um, me having lung cancer oh, and goodness. prostate cancer at the same time. So I might not be going to the Dolphins games other than picking a few to go to this year uh, because I need to make sure I have time freed up for my medical needs. 100%. 100 so, That's all that matters. So, you know, the wife and I today talked about it and I said, well, I'll contact the ticket agent and see what they say as far as whether I can cancel the season or not. And so, you know, you never know what will happen. Hopefully they'll they'll just cancel it for me and then I'll be able to ride down when I am healthy rather than trying to make it when I'm not. 100 percent. You know, you got to worry about your health. That's the true thing that matters here. And, you know, you know, I'm always thinking of you and praying for you. And, I appreciate uh, it. A lot of love for you, brother. You know that. I so, appreciate it. <clears throat> um, all right. So let's talk more about the draft. Let's go. Let's talk about going around the league, fish tank, and react to some people what they think. The experts, fish tank. Make sure I say experts. Um, yeah. I have to use the quotations. The uh, experts. Go the experts like Hank. Yes. <laughs> so let's see what they're saying. Okay, and let's react. To some of these names, all right, Fish Tank. Um, all right, let's go ahead and drag this down. Back out for a moment here. All right, I just want to make sure I don't miss anything. All right, all right, Fish Tank. First one from CBS Sports, Eric Galco. He has Miami drafting at 21. Johnny Newton. Defensive lineman out of Illinois. Yeah, right. Like he'll be there. Well, you know, I'll be honest with you. Uh, for me, again, I always say my opinion, Fish Hank, because I don't want people to think I'm not smarter than anybody else. We all look at it different ways. Yeah. Uh, I think I would pick Braden Fisk over at, out of New uh, before I'd pick Newton. Um, yes. I like Newton. There were plays where I was like, whoa. But there was a lot of plays where I was kind of like, I don't know, dude. I didn't see – what some other people saw about the number one D lineman. To me, he's he's not. I think he has a lot of flash. I wouldn't hate it, but I'm not. I don't prefer it. That's what's my opinion. Make sure I'm not missing. Okay, more CBS Sports. Chris Trapasso. He has the Dolphins taken fan favorite. Jackson Powers Johnson, the center out of Oregon. Uh, Dolphins did sign Aaron Brewer, but again, never say never on any of these draft picks. I think the Dolphins did great in regards of drafting players, uh, signing players, their needs, so they could get best player available. And Jackson Powers might be best player available. Mike Tannenbaum used to run the Dolphins. He used to be in charge of Chris Greer before He's Chris an Greer. Idiot. Yeah, officially before Chris Greer took over the role. Officially, he has the Dolphins taking Jackson Powers. Yeah, well, Jackson Powers, JPJ has been dropping on boards for some reason. Well, yeah, I saw a report, and again, you take it with great assault, every report. But I saw a report that said that Jackson Powers could fall out of the first round. Yeah. 
I don't know how true that could be, but that would be great news for Miami because that means he would fall to 21 or later <laughs> if you trade down, you know. So hopefully it's true, but we don't know. Um, Bucky Brooks, NFL.com, also Jackson Powers. He says beefing up the offensive line could help Miami upgrade an offense that struggled against physical defensive fronts last season. 100% true. The Athletic, bed standing, Graham Barton, offensive lineman, Duke. Ooh, I like. We've touched on that fish tank. Center, guard, tackle. He could do it all. He had an amazing pro day. I'm 100% for it at 21 if that's our first pick. The Draft Network has uh, Jeff Denver, Jamie Eisner, Byron Murphy, defensive lineman, Texas. I prefer Ooh. Byron Murphy over Newton at 21. I would love Byron Murphy. That dude is a beast. Yes. This one was a head scratcher, but you can never say never with the Dolphins. <laughs> Pro Football Network, uh, Kef Ciedelo has the Dolphins taking Kool-Aid McKinstry, corner of Alabama. Oh, boy, would Dolphins fans be pissed. Man. <laughs> Very interesting. He updated on March 21st. He says, with just one corner off the board, I guess in his mop, the Dolphins pursue the position that position of need over others and grab Alabama corner McKinstry. <sighs> Okay. NFL.com. <laughs> Chad Roeder. Tyler Guyton, offensive lineman, Oklahoma. No. The Athletic. He, they have a projected trade. Uh, I don't see a draft pick there who they took, but they had the Raiders trading up to 21 and 158 or 44, 77, and 112. Yeah. I don't hate that at all. I don't hate uh, that. And the Raiders would be I'd trading up for Michael Penix. something, but hey, if it's got to be 44, so be it. Extra pick, brother. Extra That's pick. Three. Josh three. Edwards of CBS Sports has Jackson Powers. Yahoo Spurts, Charles Mc, McDowell, and Nate Trace both have Byron Murphy. Will Brunson of CBS Sports has Penn State offensive lineman, who that would be a shock if he fell that far. Alumanyara Fashanu. I can't pronounce you just that. butchered that one, whatever it was. Whatever it was, I'm sure I did. But Fushanu <laughs> Fashanu of Penn State. <laughs> Ryan Wilson of CBS Sports has Brock Bowers going to Dolphins at 21. Oh, uh, oh yeah, right. <laughs> Mel Kuyper, Graham Barton. We all know Fox Sports' Joel Klott has Michael Penix going to Miami, quarterback. J Daniel Jeremiah, NFL.com, Graham Barton. Byron Murphy for Vinny, uh, Vinny Iyer of, CB of Sporting News. USA Today, Nate Davis, Graham Barton. 33rd team, Marcus Mosher, Cooper DeJean, corner out of Iowa, and safety. CBS Sports, Kyle Stackpole. I would love this pick, Fish Tank. Troy Fatanu, guard, Washington. Yeah. He could play tackle as well. Yeah. Connor Rogers of NBC Sports, Graham Barton as well. Yep. Johnny Newton, the ringer. Pro Football Focus has Byron Murphy. Charles Davis, Brock Bowers again. Lance Zorline, NFL.com, Chop Robinson. And then finally, the ringer, Danny Kelly, Byron Murphy. Fish tank. Which name excites you the most, and which name scratches your head? The Bauer scratches my head because I don't think he's going to fall that far. There's, I, I just don't see it. If he did, it'd be like, oh, like you know, the sky. Run, the sun run to the down. board. <laughs> you know, you sit there and you see a tight end like that. You got to take him. That that'd be like saying, you know. Rob Gronkowski's on the board, and you're not going to take him at 21. 
that, that's kind of how I see Bowers, how good he is. So, or a Kelsey or somebody like that, you know? Yeah. Fins up, everybody. Trade to it. Pick 20 for pick one. Ah, there you go. Oh, jeez. Here we go, Raphael. Let's see. Um, what Which one excited you the most? There was a lot of good names. Which one made you go, ooh, I love that? I like Murphy and I like JPJ. Out of, the ones, out of the ones that were there, I like those two. Um, I don't hate on Newton. I just don't think he's the greatest, so. Yeah, I, 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 um, I, uh, again, I think I like Newton. I wouldn't be mad, but I would, especially though, if there's those other guys on the board, I'd rather go that way. Uh, the offensive line, really those guys there, uh, let me move down here, uh, see where I have. I'm just really getting into that, but yeah, one of the top offensive linemen, Fashanu at a Penn State. I mean, if he's there, that'd be a huge pickup. I don't know if he plays guard, but that's a huge pickup. Um, Graham Barton, Troy Fatanu out of Washington uh, would be huge gets if you could. But knowing Miami and knowing uh, – <clears throat> Knowing, knowing Miami and knowing how they, uh, you know, especially with Chris Greer when he says we are more, more worried about the offensive line than he is. Uh, I again, I I find it very unlikely or not very unlikely. I don't never say never, but I think edge rusher or wide receiver. I don't know why. To, uh, I mean, I feel more, and I wouldn't hate either one, but I have a feeling though that's going to be the pick, one of those two positions. We'll see. Penix, Utah Fitz fan. Penix makes no sense. Two is our quarterback, whether you like it or not. Penix is the same thing as Tua. The only difference is he's two years younger and he has the same amount of injuries and everything else. Yeah. Why would you Look, want a younger – if you don't want Tua, why would you want Penix? That doesn't I, that 100% fish. That's my thing. Look, you could have – you could look, first of all, if you're a Dolphins fan, you could, you could want the Dolphins to get whoever you want. If you don't believe Tua is the guy and you want the Dolphins, okay, that's all fair game. But let's be real here. If you have an issue with Tua because you say maybe he's injury prone, if that's it, and you want Michael Penix, you need to go back to the board because, as much as as much talent as Penix has, and I like him, I he was my Heisman Trophy winner last year. He was my pick. Uh, Jaden Daniels won, but obviously he's fast. Michael Penix, he could throw. He has a cannon. He has he's had like two or three season ending injuries. If we're gonna get on Tua for not staying healthy, even though he stayed healthy last year, then you shouldn't be talking about. Uh, Penix over Tua. We've waited 23 years to get a franchise quarterback. We're not trading him. Um, again, Tua's our quarterback until he's not. Hey, I told you the car matches the shirt. <laughs> I'm in the I'm in the car doing a broadcast. <laughs> uh, he's our quarterback until he's not. You know. That's what it is. That's how I see it. And again, any position at twenty-one other than quarterback, I think is less is more likely. But I'll say never say never. Uh, but anyway, all right, guys. Fish, Day, any final thoughts before we wrap this up? I know you got to go gamble. Yeah, I'm sweating in this car too, man. I keep opening the door up to get a little air, you know. <laughs> it's Florida. It's hot. I, I hear you, brother. No, I'm good. I mean, I want to thank everybody for being patient with me in this uh, atmosphere, but this is all I had today. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Let me see here. All right. Hey, guys, look, uh, we had uh, we have 49, 50 people watching right now throughout Twitter, X, uh, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. Hop on over to uh, YouTube. Hit that like and subscribe button. You can catch Fish Steak here every Saturday with me on Fit Talk Today. Or on the bandwagon, catch me on On the Clock or East 10th Street Boys or Heat Basketball Podcast throughout the week. Like, subscribe. As always, most importantly, appreciate all of you. But Dolphin fans, fins up. Fins up.